Hello and welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. We're going to show you how to do a Russian steam bath today and this is a hydrotherapy treatment which just means water therapy. Um, now I'm going to tell you a little bit later about why you would want to do a Russian steam bath but at the moment I'm just going to tell you um, what things that you're going to need. Um, with all the craziness going on in the world right now with the coronavirus I thought this is a, a great home remedy that you can do um, with the things that you can just find in your home. So if you don't have exactly what I have, just work with what you've got. Um, so what you're going to need is um, something to create steam, which I am using today a rice cooker. Um, you can use a kettle or um, a hot plate with some boiling water on there, although I don't recommend that one because it can be quite dangerous because it can catch on fire. Um, so you need some steam. You need a chair that's either wooden or plastic and we're gonna cover this chair with a towel. Um, you're gonna need a hot foot bath with some hot water in it, and this water is going to be at least 40 degrees, and you're gonna keep it at 40 degrees the whole treatment. You're also gonna need some ice water with some two towels to put in there, and some towels. So over here, I have some towels I'm gonna to use. I have three towels. Um, two you'll definitely need, the other one is just a spare one. So what we're going to do is we're going to just drape um, the chair with the towel to start off with because our patient is going to get very hot and steamy and we don't um, want it to be uncomfortable for them. So I'm just going to put the towel here and I'm going to get um, Sam to come through now and have a seat on the chair. He's our patient today and Sam is in some swimmers. So um, ideally you want to um, have someone wearing as little as possible. Um, so either a bathing suit or um, yeah, in their underwear, but whatever is comfortable for them, but you want the steam to be able to hit their skin and, and affect their skin. So now we've got Sam on the chair with the towel. We're going to cover him again with another towel around his back over here like this. Um, so this is just to protect him as well. Um, now the steam that we have is over here. We're going to put this behind the chair. So you don't want to put it underneath the chair, you want to put it behind the chair so he doesn't burn because you'll find with this treatment, um, steam can burn very quickly. So you need to be with the patient the whole in entire treatment. Now that we have um, the towel there, we're going to put a sheet around him. Now this sheet is going to be like a tent and we're going to just unfold it and place it around the rice cooker or the steam, however you're creating steam. So we're placing it around the steam and we're bringing it around him. Now, before I put the, the, um, the tent around him, I'm going to put his feet in the water. So the first thing, I'm going to actually get his foot and put my hand in the water first to make sure it's not too hot for the person. So is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so once you know that the hot water is okay, you can place their feet in there. Now this might be a little bit too tepid, so I'm going to put some more hot water in there right now. If you just want to lift your feet up, Sam, and I'm going to just pour some hot water in there. All right, there we go. You can put it back in there. So you want some hot water on, on hand. Now we're going to bring the sheet around him and create a tent. Okay, so you should start to feel the steam already. Now that we've got the sheet there, we're going to put one more thing over him and that is a plastic tent. <laughs> now I've created this with two curtains that I bought from Bunnings or a hardware store or anywhere that you can find curtains or if you don't have um, shower curtains, you can use drop sheets or any plastic. And if you don't have plastic, you can just put a woolen blanket around them. So use whatever you can. Um, so I've bought two and I just duct tape them together. So it's a home job. And I'm gonna put this over Sam's head. Okay. So you don't want any gaps. So if there's any gaps here, you wanna close them up. Okay. And now he's in his steam bath. Now, are you feeling okay? Yeah. Fine. Can you feel steam coming through yet? Yeah, I can feel. Yeah. Are you anywhere burning? No. Okay. So you want to always check with your patient the whole procedure because 
if the steam is too close, um, it will start to burn and you'll need to move the steam back or put another towel around their body parts that's getting burnt because they're not meant to get burnt, they're just meant to be, feel really hot. So now that this is on him, I'm going to set my timer. You do this for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, now with your towels here, we're going to put them in the ice water and we're going to put this on his head because you do not want to get the head hot. You want to keep the head cold because your brain doesn't like to get hot <laughs> and it can be dangerous. So um, I've got two hand towels here. I'm just going to wring this out. One of them I'm going to put around his neck and the other one I'm going to put on his head. So the reason why we put it on the neck is because the blood um, that's down in this area of his body is going to come up here and be hot so this is going to help cool the blood down before it gets to the head so we put that there and um, the whole idea of this um, treatment is to get him to sweat to increase his body temperature to the point where he gets sweat on the top of his lip once he gets sweat on the top of his lip we know that the body is heated up really nice and it's basically what we're doing is we're inducing a fever and people think Fevers are a bad thing, but let me tell you, your body was created in a way that to fight infection, um, a fever is a good thing. And so that's what we're doing with this whole treatment. We're creating a fever. Um, so want to watch out for him to start sweating. And when he gets a bit more warmer, I will put a, a cold towel on his head here. We also want to have a glass of water with a straw, okay? So you've got to make sure it's a straw because he has no hands to drink it. And so, do you, would you like some water? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, you wanna hydrate them the whole time, okay? So, you're gonna keep checking with your patient the whole time. Is there any, are you burning anywhere? No. Okay, all right, good. All right, do you feel like you're getting warm? Yep. Okay, good. All right, so let me just tell you um, a little bit about the Russian steam bath. So, like I said, it's a hydrotherapy treatment. And this is, would be fantastic for something like a cold or a flu and the coronavirus because we know that that's a type of flu, a type of viral infection and it's something that affects the lungs. Um, so if you feel the onset of a flu, flu-like symptoms, runny nose, sore throat, um, you would, it would be great to do this. So basically this is going to boost your immune system and we all know that to have a good immune system means you're not going to come down with the flu or the cold. Um, so even if you don't have the flu or cold, or if you don't have coronavirus, you can do this just to boost your immune system. If you're already healthy and you want another boost, you can do this treatment. Um, as soon as you start feeling though, the onset of these types of symptoms, like a chesty sort of um, symptoms, you wanna do this straight away. Um, so this is gonna increase your white blood cell count and by increasing your white blood cell to count, those are the, the things that fight infection. And those are the things that your body creates to go and find those bacteria and find those microbes that are causing problems. So this is what we're going to do for Sam right now. Um, so I'm just going to put um, a cold towel on his head. And just cool him down a little bit. So. You want to create kind of like a turban on him and keep his head nice and cool. Now, we also got to remember to keep the hot foot bath really nice and hot. Is that starting to cool down yet or do you think yeah, you can... it's, it's pretty much... Okay. I can't feel okay. the warmth in there. So I'm going to put some more hot water in there. So when you're putting the hot water in there, you want to make sure you um, tell them to remove the feet a little bit. And I'm going to place the hot water in there. And I'm just going to feel it before he can put it in. Okay, Okay, it's nice and hot. <laughs> um, the hot foot bath is going to just help increase his body temperature. Um, and the water ideally should be warm, um, not cold, even a bit, you know, like a tea. Um, so that's going to help increase his body temperature as well. Um, so things to watch out with this treatment, okay? So contraindications are you wouldn't do this treatment on someone who has um, hardening of the arteries or heart disease. Um, you wouldn't do this treatment on high blood pressure um, because this is going to actually raise his blood pressure. 
You also wouldn't do this on someone who had diabetes because someone who has diabetes, they can't actually feel heat very well. So they could easily burn themselves because they actually don't have a sense of things that are hot. So I would just watch it um, doing this treatment with those types of high risk patients. If you do want to try it, you'd have to seek your um, physician for their medical clearance on something like this. Also someone who's very old and frail, it is a quite intense treatment, um, so I would watch with a very old, frail person because they could get faint. Um, you just might have to lessen the time that you do it. Also, someone who is very young, okay? But generally, for the general person who's normally pretty well, they're fine with this type of treatment. So those are the things that you need to, to watch out on. Now, this is just one way of treating someone with a cold virus. Um, or any other type of illness. Um, there are many, many ways you can treat um, things with, with water. And if you don't have access to a steam, um, a rice cooker or creating steam, you could just do a really hot bath where it's almost a bit uncomfortable for 15 minutes so that you start to sweat yourself. Um, and then finish off with a cold shower. Um, you could also get do a sauna if you have access to an infrared sauna. You want to go in there. Um, the only thing I don't like about saunas is you can't keep the head cold um, because you're obviously in the whole thing yourself and you can get very hot. Uh, but a sauna is a great one. Also just uh, a hot foot bath without the steam. Um, getting up your feet in hot water and then wrapping yourself up. Um, how are you going there? Yeah. You're getting Get a bit warm. warm. Yeah. Not burning anywhere? No. Okay, good. So um, yeah, a hot foot bath. You could get a woolen blanket. Um, you could do what I've done here, except for just wrap some wool around him. Um, same cold on the head, same thing. Um, just increasing that body temperature to help fight off this infection. Um, one other thing to note is that you would treat someone with this only once a day for three days in a row, and then you wouldn't do it after that. Um, you should be feeling pretty well after um, one to two days of this treatment. So. Um, that's one thing to note. Another thing to be aware of is to have an assistant with you so you never leave the patient. I've already mentioned um, the fact that you need to stay with someone but if you needed to go get more ice or go get more water um, you'd have to get someone else to do that for you so that you can always be with the patient and see if they're okay. Uh, it's really important because like steam can really have a really quick instant effect. Another thing to be mindful of when you're doing this treatment is to um, check their pulse throughout the 20 minutes. If their pulse goes over 140 beats per minute, you to cease the treatment. Um, that's too high, um, but if it's around 120, that's probably like the maximum you'd want it to be the whole time, but anything 140 and over, um, you'd cease the treatment. So by taking the pulse, you just um, check on their neck. Um, you need to have a stopwatch and, you know, obviously count how many um, beats there are and um, time it. Uh, for 10 seconds and then you just multiply that number by six and you'll get how many beats per minute it is. Um, so yeah, that's one thing to do throughout the treatment as well. All right, so he's told me it's get, the steam's getting a bit hot, so what we're going to do is we're going to just adjust it. So yeah, always work with the patient. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, good. You're starting to sweat now, so that's good. A good sign. He's raising his body temperature. So now we're nearly at the end of the procedure, so what we're going to do to finish is we're going to get our hand towels and place them in the ice water and make them cold again. And we're going to do what's called a cold mitten friction on his back. Um, and then he's going to go jump in a shower and be in a complete cold shower to cool off. After he gets out of the shower, he's going to rest for 20 to 30 minutes at least. Um, 30 minutes is, is ideal. Um, now, don't miss the rest part because you can do this treatment and then it will have not really any effect if you don't do the rest. The rest is where your body then processes basically what it's just been through and it um, creates a healing effect. So ideally, you would want to do this at night time just before you go to bed. So you can do the treatment, get in the cold, get in the warm, um, warm yourself up and then go to bed. And that would be the, the best way. But if you're doing this in the morning, just make sure you rest for 30 minutes afterwards. Uh, when you're stopping the treatment, um, you want to 
make sure um, when you lift off the tent that the steam doesn't burn their face so you've got to be careful of that so remove the steam first and then remove the, the, the tents because the steam can come up and burn the face and that's another reason why you um, you put the towel across here because steam can come up through the tent and burn you as well so that's another reason why you do that okay so now we're going to finish off the treatment all right so just tell your patient that you're going to stop the steam and um, finish the treatment and sweaty mm -hmm. all right so now I'm going just to apply the cold mint friction on your back mm -hmm. okay so so I'm just gonna just lift up your shirt a little bit just so I can get it on your skin because you want to touch their skin with this all right so be prepared for the cold so this is ice cold water on his back now we're just gonna do friction so you want to Make it red. If it's not red, it's not friction. <laughs> you do this for about 30 seconds. Okay, now Sam, we're gonna go put you in the shower. So he's gonna go have a cold shower now. That concludes the Russian steam bath. So I hope this will be some benefit to you. I'll leave a link in the description below of some more hydrotherapy treatments to a website that will give you more information about this. Thank you.